Hi, we're going to look at patisserie holdings, which went bust, of course, but it's a really good example of what to watch for in a set of company accounts to make sure that you're buying a quality company, you're not buying a fraud. So my name's Steve Clapham. I am a equity analyst with many, many years of experience. In 2018, I set up a training business behind the balance sheet. And that's what I do full time now. I train professional equity investors, mainly analysts, mainly equity analysts, but some credit analysts as well. And I train them in how to go through forensically a set of company accounts. These are my contact details, my websites behind the And you can find me on Twitter at Steve Clapham. We do online courses the most important of which for most people are a course which is how to read a balance sheet. And we also have an analyst academy. It's a 12 month program in which you can learn to be an equity analyst. And in person, we have our flagship forensic accounting course, which has been taken now by over 250 professional equity and credit analysts and portfolio managers. You can find out more on our, on our website. And this is a commendation from a, a, an equity analyst who came along to our forensic accounting course. He paid for it himself. And he said, look, I really enjoyed it. I found it very valuable. I do think you should charge a bit more. And that analyst is now enrolled in our analyst academy and has taken several of our online courses. Our clients are happy clients. This is our, our website where you can find out more information and um, it's coursesbehindthebalancesheet.com. So I'm now going to talk about Patisserie Valerie. And this is what it makes. Very intricate, delicious cakes. Are you getting hungry? It started to fold in late 2018. And the reason, I believe, is that we'd had one of the hottest summers on record in the UK, which obviously people buy ice cream, they don't buy cake and the company started to run short of its own internal cash projections and it ended up it couldn't pay the tax man. And that's when it started to unravel. It had an emergency rights issue. This is Patisserie Valerie. This is if you're not in the UK, this is what, the, what, it, what it looks like. And you can see lots of happy customers in there. Um, the important thing about Patisserie Valerie was it was a simple business, very well presented. The chap here, Luke Johnson, is a very well-known entrepreneur. He was executive chairman. He was the driving force, the main shareholder. And he knew how to sell an equity story. And you can see this is a slide from the, the analyst presentations delineating why you should invest. I always think this is quite dangerous because if you have somebody who's very good at selling you an equity story, the chances are you might pay too much. So always watch for this sort of presentation. What I'm going to go through are a few analytical tools that you can use in your research, in your investment process, to try and ensure that you're buying good companies and to avoid frauds. So I'm going to go through all of these things. Sales history. So what I've done here is I've just looked at the sales per restaurant. So I've taken the sales in each period. H1 obviously is an annualized figure. And I've just gone through and said, well, what are the sales divided by the number of restaurants? And I've taken the average number of restaurants, opening and closing. And you can see from this that the sales per unit, the sales per restaurant, haven't grown between 2013 and 2018. That's not a good signal. Because what that means is that they've had to encounter labor cost inflation possibly rent inflation at the same time as their turnover per unit has been pretty static. What this is telling you is this isn't a growth business. It might be a growth business in terms of it can grow the number of units, but obviously to open a new restaurant costs money. You need to devote more capital. So I look at this sales per unit as being a key facet of the organic growth in the business. And what this is telling you is there isn't any organic growth and therefore you should watch what you pay. The cost history has been pretty stable. This is looking at the employee cost of sales and rents to sales. You see they've been flat. And the margins been stable and in fact slightly growing a bit in the latter part of the, the company's quoted life. 
This is looking at its gross margin versus its peer group. Now, in all these charts, Patisserie Valerie, ticker cake, is the red line. And you can see what I've done here is I've compared it with its, with its UK peer group plus Starbucks. Its gross margin is much higher than its peer group, and there's a very simple reason for that. It's got a different, different definition of gross margin. You can see that here because here's the other costs of percent of sales also much higher. What this means is that we've got to look at Patisserie Valerie at the EBIT line in order to compare it. So what I've done here is I've looked exactly at that. It's EBIT margin versus its peer group. And you can see that it's the third highest of its peers behind only Starbucks and Domino's. You need to take Domino's out of the equation because Domino's is a franchise business and franchise businesses by their very nature tend to have less capital and make higher margins. But it's interesting how close its margins are to those of Starbucks and how far away they are from its peers. So it's making 15% plus margins when its peers are down 5 to 10%. That's a big gap. Why? Could it be high prices? Well, Baker and Spice is one of its chains and they are known for being a high price product. Or could it be higher gross margin products in the mix? Well, if you look at the divisional analysis, you can see that Baker and Spice doesn't really make any higher margins than the other brands in the group. And it's quite small. So it's too small to make that much of a difference. So could it be higher? products, higher gross margin products. And remember that the comparison was with Starbucks. And the thing is, Starbucks is one of the, makes one of the highest gross margin products you can make, coffee. I know this because my friend who owned King Tut's Wawa Hut told me that coffee was his highest gross margin product. And indeed, this is an, an, an illustration from an Australian coffee chain but in actual fact, the gross profit for coffee is actually in the 80s percent. This is a, a, low, a low ball estimate. Think about a cup of coffee and think about these cakes. Think about Starbucks. Think about Patisserie Valerie. Most people buy a cup of coffee in Starbucks to take it away. If you're taking it away, you don't need as much labor and you don't need as much space. Labor is the single highest cost element for a restaurant. Rent is number two. Very unlikely that Patisserie Valerie making these products, look at them, they're incredibly intricate, they're full of cream, they go off. How could it make as much margin as Starbucks when most of the people are buying a cake and are sitting down for which you need a waitress and you need a table? It just doesn't stack up. And that analysis would be sufficient for you to have avoided Patisserie Valerie right from the start. What we've done there is look at other quoted companies. And there are other ways of comparing margins in order to assess are they sensible. And it's one of my key tools. And one of the other ways of doing it is look at divisions of other quoted companies. And we're lucky because in the UK, we have Costa Coffee, which was a division of Whitbread. And you can see here, the cost of margins are significantly below those of Starbucks and of Patisserie Valerie, which, by the way, has got um, all the costs of being a public company, is much smaller than Costa, appears to be making higher margins than Costa. Quite unlikely. We can also look at uncoated comps. This is Cafe Concerto, and you can see the delicious cakes in its window very similar to the Patisserie Valerie cakes. So let's just look at the comparison of Patisserie Valerie with its unquoted peers. Here you can see the margins, and Patisserie Valerie is miles, miles higher than its peer group. Here's the sales per employee. Patisserie Valerie, miles lower than its peer group. I suspect that some of the reason for this is the fact that Patisserie Valerie isn't showing full-time equivalents. You can see here that the cost per employee are also much lower than a couple of those, those comparators. But if we look at staff cost of sales, Patisserie Valerie's got the highest staff cost of sales of any of the peers. 
and it's also got the highest rents of any of its unquoted peers. So again, highly unlikely that it would be making higher margins when it's got higher labor costs and higher rents. This is a comparison with a quoted peer group. And again, you can see the low sales productivity. But again, this is probably because it's not using full-time equivalents and its peers are. These are the quoted comps that I've been comparing it with. And you can see the high labor costs of percent of sales, not massively out of line with its peer group, less so than the unquoted companies that we saw. And here's its rents. Rents are percent of sales higher by a big factor than its quoted peers. So, you know, very difficult to make higher margins when all your cost lines are higher. And look at the sales per restaurant. The sales per restaurant for Patisserie Valerie are a fraction of some of its quoted peers. Again, very unlikely that you can make super margins if your sales per unit are much lower, because you still need somebody to wash the dishes. You still need a chef. You still need a manager. You've got a certain amount of fixed costs per unit. So unless you were operating in an airport or in a railway station where you might have smaller per square foot units and much higher volumes, highly unlikely in the high street you would see this sort of relationship where the smallest company, the company with the smallest units are making the highest margins. We also like to look at the balance sheet, and this is an extremely important way of checking for fake sales, checking the balance sheet assets. So restaurants tend to have limited debtors because people pay cash and it tends to have pretty low stocks. So what do we do? We look at current assets, less cash against revenue. And here's the chart. And you can see that Patisserie Valerie, miles higher current assets minus cash as a percent of sales, another indicator of potential fraud. And its cash generation versus earnings are amongst the lowest in its peer group. So it's got all these beautiful earnings and lovely manufactured growth, but it ain't generating the cash that you would expect. That's a big warning signal again. So the conclusion of all this is that doing this sort of detailed analysis reduces your risk. And I've shown you some of these checks that we do in this video. And the conclusion in Patisserie Holdings were, was the margins looked overstated. The valuation pre the announcement was actually very rich. You were paying a lot for a patisserie valerie unit. And that was justifiable only if you could roll that format out to a significantly larger number of units and those margins were real and sustainable. The margin of safety was lacking in patisserie valerie. 